Hey there, I'm Lisa Niven Kelly here for Beachcation.com. And in this class, we're going to teach you how to solder a simple ring out of wide, flat wire. This class is episode four in our soldering series. And in the previous class, episode three, we learned how to solder simple rings out of 14 gauge wire. So the difference in this one is the stock that we're using, you could use sheet or we're using flat wire, is wider, it's about five millimeters. So soldering it together is a little trickier because you gotta make sure that those two ends are perfectly, perfectly flush. Like we talked about in episode one and episode two, one of the golden rules of soldering is making sure that your seams are totally closed. Solder will not fill gaps. That's the key in this one. We're gonna teach you how to get those two ends to come together super flush and then how to solder the ring shut. According to the chart, I'm going to measure this piece out to 54.7 millimeters. Super specific, I know, but follow along with me here. And it's that's so that it'll fit me. <laughs> it is so it'll fit you, Lisa. <laughs> Size six, yes. So the, um, the stock that we use uh, in the class today is one by five millimeters in measurement. That's the thickness and the width. We're gonna use the digital caliper and turn it on here with the red button oh perfect perfect example here see how it bounced lisa mm. you always want to zero it out oh good one. it's like a scale you know mm -hmm. zero that out and then we're going to open this up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to 54.7 <laughs> oh, oh, oh overshot tricky and you could, I guess you could use a ruler if you didn't sure. know this. Sure, of course. Mm -hmm. This just looks easy, huh? Mm -hmm. So there's 54.7. And we have prepped this material. So this end is already flat and flush, which is awesome. And you're just gonna put that right up against the little jaw of the caliper there. Mm -hmm. And with your Sharpie, come in here and place a mark. You know what, I'm gonna flip this over. It's always easier to see the mark on the back. Smart. Excuse my hand here. So I want you to notice something. So 54.7 and I placed a mark on the interior of that length. Mm -hmm. So when we go to cut this, I wanna remember to cut on the right side or on this so don't side cut of the line. line. Don't cut inside, cut on the right edge of the line. You got it, yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. And to cut this, we're gonna use the Fat Daddy cutter, which is With really nice. With crystal on it. Yeah, yeah. This is <laughs> That's how I mark my tools. And the sticker. And the sticker. Mm -hmm. And these are really great because they cut, you know, these thicker gauges of soft metal. Um, you could also saw, mm -hmm. you know, use a jeweler saw. And this is how you're gonna do this. Place your cutter here. I'm gonna put it into position and I'm gonna show you a couple things here. There we go. Well, there we go. I want you to see how it looks. See how it looks kind of at an angle? Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of an optical illusion. Oh, because of the jaw? Mm -hmm, because of the jaw. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna just go ahead and cut. Mm. Nice. Use all your muscles. So I guess it's important that that line you drew was straight. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good one. The next step is gonna be using the miter vise to true up this end okay. and file it flat and flush. Of course, not everybody has a miter vise. So you could um, use the, the table's edge as a flat surface. Um, or you could just really practice just filing true, flat, and straight. To be honest, I'm not super great at that. Yeah, that's I've, hard. Yeah, I've always used a miter vise um, because it's such a, an awesome tool. And here it is <laughs> for those of you who haven't seen it before. The miter vise is cool. Um, 
it allows you to cut at a 90 degree, 90 degree angle or 45. If we were making boxes, uh, we would, yeah, use those 45s. So we're gonna loosen up these nuts here and then allow these plates to slide apart. We're gonna use this little, see that little square box? Yeah. We're gonna use that as a, as a straight edge or, you know, a little, a little straightening, like a little straight wall to butt our metal up against. So I'm just gonna put the metal through the vise and then slide it towards that little block. So and I just the want- the whole side against the block. Yeah, mm -hmm. and once I get into place here, I'll show you too. So I just want, remember that Sharpie marker is on the inside mm -hmm. of our measurement. Oh, right. So let's protect that. Mm -hmm. We're just taking off just a hair of metal. And now you can see if you cut it straight. Yes, yes. You wanna make sure though, when you put this in here, that the metal is butted up right there to the end of that little square on the front and the back. Because mm -hmm. if it's not, if it's a little off on the back, you'll file, um, it'll, be, it'll be flat, but your total piece will actually be angled. All right. Do you crank really hard on that? You know what, to be honest, I kind of do. Okay. You don't want to, um, you know, use all of your strength because we don't want to mar the metal and we definitely mm -hmm. don't want to smush out any of the stamping that we did, mm -hmm. but it needs to stay put. Okay. You don't want to slide around. I'm actually going to move out to the edge of the table, so let's change the camera angle. Okay. So here we are on the edge of the table. And what I like to do is, here's the length of wire, have that hanging off the edge of the table mm -hmm. and rest the miter vise here. Good one. So my left hand is, is holding it in place. Yeah, I've tried to do this holding it and it's quite difficult. This yeah. is brilliant. And in previous classes, we've just held it because yeah. you know we have to keep it, you know, you wanna keep it in the frame, but this is really a nice way to do that. Take my file, this is a coarse, it's a coarse file, nice big one. And we're going to file just that little bit of Let me feel. metal, yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's just a little bit of metal there. I want to tell you we're gonna we're gonna break a rule today. Do it. Rule breakers. Woohoo! This is steel. This is a jeweler's file. Most instructors would tell you that this is a super no-no. Um, but in my work and the way that I use tools, I make choices about how I am going to. Um, What's the nice way to say it? Let some old traditions go and accept go. some new ones, right? Oh, I like that. This file is not that expensive, and the benefit of filing against the steel tool is is awesome. So I just go with it, right? Yeah, it is really expensive. It's not a fifty dollar file. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. And it's a really rough one, so we can get the job done pretty quick. Pretty quick, exactly. So what's going to happen is here is, is as I file, you're going to feel the stick. You saw, see that little jump there? Yeah. It's because I'm catching the sterling silver, and the mm -hmm. sterling silver is kind of sticky. So once I'm once I, I know that I'm I'm done when the file's just like gliding across the steel. Watch this, okay? There we go. That's it? That was it. Oh. <laughs> I'm showing you though, hear it? Oh, yeah, yeah, catching. Steel on steel. Oh, the steel on steel, yeah. Breaking rules. Breaking rules. Out of control. And you're only going one direction with the file because that's the direction it cuts best. And yeah. it said, people say that it dulls or ruin your files to go back and forth, but really it just takes longer as well. Mm -hmm. So now this is, now now feel that. Oh. Mm -hmm. Flat and flush against the. Good one. So let's check on our measurement now. To check the measurement, your natural gut reaction is going to be just to turn this on and go like this, Yeah. but I want you to start over. Cool. Zero it out. Yeah, zero it out. Okay, zero it out. And instead of this time just pulling it out and finding that sweet spot, we're truly just measuring this. So pull it out and squeeze it in. All right, we lost oh, a hair. 
We lost 0.2 of a millimeter. We lost two tenths of a millimeter. Am I worried about it? I'm not. Me neither. I'm not worried about it because you know what? When we are done soldering this and we're rounding it off on the ring mandrel, it'll probably stretch out a little bit anyways. Two tenths worth. Yeah, totally. All right, Lisa, what do you think we do from here? Um, now we solder it together. Oh, wait. <laughs> First, we're going to make Bam. a solder. It. First, we're going to shape it. Shape it. In preparation for soldering, we need to shape this ring. Okay. Uh, and your, you know, your natural instinct would go, okay, now we're going to shape this into a perfect circle, but actually we're not going to. We're going to shape it into this really wonky kind of D shape. So you're going to use uh, a wrap and tap to do this. You could also use a wooden dowel, um, really any round thing you could find to shape it around. I like the, the wrap and taps though. Okay. So use the middle section. This is also going to depend on the length of your strip. Let's say you're making a size 10 ring. You would probably want to use the larger or smaller, step mm -hmm. it down. Yep, exactly. But we're making a pretty kind of middle of the ground size. So we're going to use the middle mantle mm -hmm. here. And just with my fingers, I'm going to push the wire around the middle wrap and tap. Okay. into this shape. Now here we're going to stop because we have stamped this metal. We have now shaped this metal mm. and now we've work hardened it. So mm. we're going to stop and we're going to anneal this. Mm. If we wanted to, we could, you know, we could fight this for the next step, but I've got to tell you, mm -mm. it's, it's worth the pause. I have made a similar ring and I learned to spend a lot of time on making sure those ends are flat and shaping it don't fight it just anneal it don't be lazy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with that said if there wasn't any stamping on this yeah you probably wouldn't need so. to yeah yep. mm -hmm. good point all right so let's let's pull in the annealing tools okay we talked about annealing previously in this series in the episode about sweat soldering yeah so we're gonna just we're gonna do it again it's always good to see it again right mm -hmm. okay so just talk through i guess yeah a little bit. totally cool. so i'm gonna strike up the torch and i'm gonna apply some flux to the piece and this is going to keep those copper oxides at bay and um, allow the metal to get cleaned up really fast in the pickle pot okay strike up the torch. Strike the torch. all right turn this up a little bit so my issue with annealing, you can go ahead and start All right. firing it while I'm asking you questions, is I always turn my torch up higher. Am I just being lazy and overkill? I think people are nervous about the torch and they forget that it has a lot of controls on it because it looks like a simple little thing. Mm -hmm. um, but you really, for soldering, for annealing, uh, for most of the things that we do in our jewelry making, you actually want the, the flame turned down pretty low. Um, it's called a neutral flame. It's a happy, soft flame. It's not a raging, <laughs> oxidizing flame. You want to hear it? Here's the difference. This is a neutral flame. Yeah. Whoa. That's an oxidizing flame. Yeah. So let's, let's pull that back. All right, so now I'm ready to anneal. And I'm going to just work in some nice soft circles here. And you put the flux on to protect the metal in a soft Correct. Yeah. And I'm actually just going to work in a little circle here until I start to notice that as I pass my torch by the metal, I can see an undertone of like a salmon, salmon peachy color. We don't want this piece to get up to like a glowing orange or glowing mm -hmm. red. This is like a light heat massage, I call it. And we have, our, we have really bright lights on, so you can't see it really well on camera, but maybe tone your lights down a little bit when you do this so you can see. Yeah, that would help a lot. Mm -hmm. And I can see it again. Mm -hmm. Not red. No, see. yeah, no, we don't, want, we don't want red. Red, bad news. All right, we're good. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Don't pick it up with your hand. Well, and I'm gonna wait. People <laughs> wanna immediately quench, mm -hmm. but there's no reason to thermal shock the metal. So you can give it like count to five okay. and then quench. 
Okay. Hold on, so that was all blurry, wasn't it? Okay. Is it all nice and squishy soft now? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Fingers crossed. But we need to pickle this before we shape it because I don't want this. The butts. Any of the butts. To, I don't want the butts to be dirty. <laughs> you said butts. <laughs> it's fresh out of the pickle pot. All cleaned up. And let's shape it. So we have this, what would you call this shape? You. It's a you. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull these little legs inward to meet. Face to face. Mm -hmm. I like to use the, the this size wrap and tap, mm -hmm. the medium for that. And I'm going to, you know what I'm gonna do? I was just gonna say we took the little I want to make sure that the, that the nylon part is actually on the nylon. Yeah, because now this metal is super soft. You can really mar it up. It is. So this this uh, protects the marring of the metal. So I'm going to go in here just on the side. Just choose one side or the other. doesn't matter. I leave a little bit sticking out there and pull it inward. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. Now go to the other side and do the same thing. Pull it inward. You're gonna make it look so easy. Done. And seam. Let's see how those guys line up. Okay. See how okay. there's there's a gap. Yeah. Solder doesn't fill a gap, so we have to close this down. Okay. I'm gonna move down to the smaller barrel on this wrap and tap. See how I'm not right on the end here? I'm kind of in the armpit. Yeah, and you left that was smart, you left it a little straight. I see why now. And now I'm going to push inward and down just slightly. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And are you having to push really hard or is it pretty mushy now? It's pretty mushy. It's nice. Sweet. Don't be lazy. Kneel. I heard a little click there. Hmm. Okay. Now I'm going to, actually I'm just going to do it again. Here we go. Down. So by passing them, passing the sides, you're getting a little tension on there too, huh? Yeah, you got it. Well, and let's like, let's have some real talk about this. I, I do this all the time. Mm -hmm. um, in my work, I make rings constantly. So I'm making this maybe look a little easier than it is. Okay. This this takes a little, see how, see that? Mm -hmm. it takes a little practice and you gotta go back and forth and back and forth. And kneeling's really gonna help you. But so you know what? You like you need to have these flat ends coming at each other. If they were trying to come at each other round, that would be more difficult. If they're it's coming like a straight line. Mm -hmm. If they were coming at each other off a like a round edge, only like a third of them would even be touch mm -hmm. like the surface area would be touching. We need those those flat ends to be completely flat and flush and touching 100%. Mm -hmm. So here's what it looks like currently. I do apologize for my hands. I am a full-time working jeweler. These are the hands. <laughs> uh, I'm a jeweler. A woman. <laughs> I think people think that we're like, you know, we're hand doing balls. some dainty thing, but making jewelry is a dirty business. So. Yeah, if your hands are all perfect, you're not working hard enough. Yeah. Mm, that looks good. Mm -hmm. Always flip it over to make sure. Let's see how I'm just kind of going back and forth here. Mm hmm. If you were still struggling, would you anneal again? So annealing is really great to soften your material, mm -hmm. but you don't want to anneal and anneal and anneal and anneal and anneal. Mm -hmm. And the reason that is, is that every time you heat your sterling silver, you're pulling the silver content to the surface of the metal, mm -hmm. and you're actually depleting the core silver of the metal. So every time we anneal it, we are slightly, I mean, I, I hate to make people nervous, but. You just don't want to, you don't want to kneel 10 times. It's a good concept yeah. to know. That makes sense. 
We're good to go, Lisa. Let's solder it. Looks good to solder. Let's do it. Before we start, Aisha, check us out. We both have our safety goggles on and hair pulled back. We sure do. Mm -hmm. And to add to that, we're actually also wearing cotton. Yep, just, on purpose. Just a good thing. I have our ring resting on the kiln brick. And if you look closely, there is a pallion of hard solder resting right there. The first thing we're gonna do is coat the ring with flux. For this technique, we're gonna flux the inside and the outside of the ring because we're going to flow the solder from the inside, but then we're gonna draw it to the outside. And we want to make sure that we're being thorough. So you're just putting one piece right there? Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Can you see it well? Yeah, I think so. All right. So maybe Lisa, you can talk us through this because I'm going to concentrate. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So you're going to take the flame and hit the ring right around there. Keep it super warm, nice and slow. Do not go fast. Do not crank up your torch. <laughs> and you don't need to concentrate on where the pallion rests because once it's up to temperature, it's just going to pull that right through. And after she gets that to flow, she's going to knock that ring over. Slowly, slowly. There it goes. Knock it and pull it through. Did you get? Were you guys able to see that flash? I think it really showed. That's good. Nice. A little kiss to pull it up to the top. That looks really good. I'm gonna hold it up before you toss it in the quench. Sure. Nice. Thanks for tugging that through. Sometimes talking and making jewelry at I the know, same time is like the patting your head and rubbing your stomach. So now I'm sure we'll be making a ring. That looks good. Yeah, that looks great. All right. Quench it and we will pickle it. How about that sandbag? <laughs> Using it as an armrest. <laughs> okay. We're rolling. Here's the ring fresh out of the pickle pot. Looks good. Yeah, looks good. I have a steel ring mandrel here and the sandbag that we normally use for metal stamping on a ring. Mm -hmm. um, and we're not going to stamp right now, but to be honest, a lot of the tools that I use are like multi-use tools. And so this is turning into just a rest because I'm kind of going to rest the back of the ring mandrel on it. And it's also just kind of supports my hand. And I just handed it to you and didn't give you a choice. But it's I have always, one. I have one. I love it. I love it. It's always yeah. with the ring mandrels so mm -hmm. they go together. So I'm going to slide the ring onto the ring mandrel. And you notice I just kind of pull down a mm -hmm. little bit. Mm -hmm. And then there are going to be high areas. Like those bumps. Uh-huh, those mm -hmm. bumps. Mm -hmm. And we're going we're gonna to go after those. And you'll notice every, with every tap I'm pulling down because the more true it gets to round. You're not having to hit very hard, it looks like. Mm -mm, and we're using a plastic mallet, you know, non-marring mallet. Not gonna hurt That's it. not going to hurt it, yeah. And with this material, I like to take it off and flip it yeah. because the mandrel is tapered and we don't want to create a tapered. That's yeah, pretty wide. Mm -hmm. Let's really get after it here. Get it, get it. You could just be laying it on the sandbag, right? Um, if you felt like it. Flip it around. Sure. Look at that. Dee dee dee. Mm-hmm. It gets a little stuck. If it gets really stuck, you can do this. That actually looks, works pretty good. 
You're not, you know what? I like that. You're not also this test. Hmm. Your solder seam. Oh, if right? it busts open. Mm hmm. And if it does bust, bust open, it's not ruined. Did yours bust open? No. Oh. <laughs> that would have been good. Teach the people what not to do. But it wouldn't be ruined. You could, you know, reshape it and resolder it. You know what I didn't do? Hmm. We have to check the size. Yes. What size? You mean put it on my hand? <laughs> <laughs> well, in a, a few more it's steps. It's going to be a little teeny shy of six. Oh, right, because it, we were two tenths yeah. of a millimeter. Oh, it's six it's on the six. dot. Yeah. Here's a good example. See how mm -hmm. two tenths. Here, you, you want to hold do? that, and I'll get a little zoom action so you can see the number. Just hold that. Well, no, no, no. Uh, hold on. Okay. No. What I'm saying is, is that it's tapered because it's smaller on this side mm -hmm. than it is on this side. Mm -hmm. So this needs to get hammered out a little bit more this mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. Do you want? No, just keep do it. Same on both sides. Good one. Here, why don't you hold it right there? Hold on. <coughs> like a side butter. <laughs> hold it right there and see if I can zoom in. Then you guys can see the size better. See the little six? It's actually hiding right under there. You want to pull it off and pull it on just a little bit so I can see the line? Yep. Nailed it. Good one. So if you're off by two tenths, it's not the end of the world. No, sure isn't. Nice. Now what? It's a good question, Lisa. How about I go oxidize and polish it and bring it back? Well, actually, we need to do some sanding. Oh, let me see. Yeah. So let's look inside the ring really quick here. There is the seam. Mm-hmm. Can you see it? Mm-hmm. There. And we want to remove any excess solder okay. and smooth over the seam so that nobody knows it's there. Okay. To do that, we're going to use 800 grit sandpaper, which I have here. There's a little piece right there. I have here on this stick, too. Mm -hmm. Let's start with the outside, just for fun. Okay. So this is a stick in it. Uh, we, Lisa wrapped 800 grit sandpaper around it. It's a very high-tech tool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then as you use it up, you just unwrap it, cut mm -hmm. it, retape. Mm -hmm. And unlike files, uh, you can go back and forth. Mm -hmm. Right. So here's the seam. I'm going to rock back and forth. Keep the shape of the ring. Correct. I don't want to sand in a flat spot. So you're blending it. Mm-hmm. And of course you could use, you know, if you have a flex shaft, you could use silicone discs. Hang on one second. Just get your hand up. It was getting out of focus. Just keep going and start again with, of course you could use. Of course, if you have a flex shaft, you could use silicone discs to do this. Yeah, since this is a beginner series, we're trying to teach you with stuff that you may have on hand. Hang on one sec. This just fell off. Your little doinky thing. Okay. And because we're sanding this area, and I want to have a consistent finish on this ring, I'm actually just going to sand. The whole thing? The whole thing, yeah. So you want to put the texture everywhere. Yeah, we got it. Of Eight course, I'm not. It's really fine. It is. Uh, and of course, I'm not. I'm not um, really going for it, you know? Not removing all the stamping. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Eraser. Right? I just want to match the finish. Do 
you want, is your grit running out? Should we change it? I'm just gonna flip it and use this part down here because that's. You can kind of hear it when it starts getting smooth sounding. That was the ticket. The ticket. So that looks good. I'm gonna hit this edge here a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna turn the sand stick and use the little narrow part here. It has a little rolled edge, so I'm gonna make sure to. Yeah, that's what's keep. great about this flatware that we carry. It has soft round edges. It's not rectangle wire. So it already has a nice finish. It's perfect for rings like this, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And cuffs. I use it for cuffs. Yeah, I do too. It ain't cheap, but it's like so perfect. Pr so size. pretty. It really ain't cheap, but it's worth it. Nice. Again, we've talked throughout this whole series about patience, and boy, does that apply here, huh? Mm-hmm. With butting up the ends, which get, getting the solder right, getting the sizes, t the ends together perfectly, and now cleaning. Yep, yep and I want to match that, you know, that area. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually just really quick on a... Yeah, speed up so oh, see. yeah, here. Just real quick. Oh, that's a good move. Mm-hmm. I like that dance move. Just to... You can actually go after that side seam that way too. Mm -hmm. And then for the inside, you could use uh, half round sanding sticks too. Mm -hmm. But we are going to find the seam. Good one. I know this isn't the most exciting part of the video. Yeah. But it's important. It's really important. I mean, we could cut and do this off camera and come back, but I really want everybody to see how long it takes. And even, I should test this every day, it still takes a little bit long. And exactly how to problem solve or tackle certain issues. So this is great. If you don't want to see this, just fast forward. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> To the beauty shot at the end <laughs> of me wearing my new ring. All right. Wow. It's still there a little bit, but you know what? I'm just leaving it. Yeah. It looks pretty good. You could continue. You can mm -hmm. bust out the silken wheels. Mm -hmm. And I do, like Lisa said, I do I do fabricate jewelry almost every day. Um, and I have invested in a flex shaft and all the kind of fancy bits. And it's a it's something I, I've never regretted. Oh yeah, it's yeah. such a time saver. Mm -hmm. So if it's something Especially when you do this for a living. Yeah, if you if it's something that you're really gonna get into, I would consider that purchase for sure. Well, and we sell the silicon discs that you can just put in a Dremel or oh, a yeah. drill for that fact. True. Yeah. Yeah. We right. have a class on polishing with silicon discs. Go ahead and search for that. You guys can check that out. All right, Lisa, this is ready to be patinaed okay. and polished. I'll do it. That we will do off camera. We'll be right back. In my hands. <laughs> Ta-da! Ta-da! <laughs> that looks great. Well, Where's very the well stamped, Lisa. Oh, very well soldered. All right, we're going Where's on a little the tour. There it is. Bam. Now, you and I have talked about how we could put it right back on the ring mandrel and stamp right at the seam to help hide it. Mm -hmm. But what I want to point out is make sure you're doing a small stamp because trying to do a long stamp like that branch after it's curved is difficult to impossible. So you don't want to mess it up. Like maybe a mm -hmm. tiny little two millimeter flower. A little daisy. Like yeah, a little. teeny little guy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also keep in mind. Well, yeah, just like the one that's already there, you see it on the right. And if you're making an exact size ring, oh right, yeah, you wouldn't want to stamp too much because your ring's going to stretch. Mm -hmm. But that would also be what if if you made your ring and it was too small, you stamp could stamp it, it some more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, what about since we're on that subject? If sure. it was too small, could they? Uh, had hammered a little harder to try to scoot it up the ring mandrel to stretch it a little. Mm -hmm. and flip if, and flip and mm -hmm. flip. And if that doesn't work, you just give it to someone else. Okay, I like it. Yeah. Different finger. <laughs> yeah, different finger or... Let's see the inside. Can you turn it a little? Yeah, it looks good. There's the seam. 
Yeah, but that's you would if we had worked harder with the tools that we use, like the pill, the pillow, like the silicon discs. We could have at that. Mm -hmm. No problem. That would come out. I think it's really pretty. It is pretty.